Thank you so much for being here tonight. Pastor Terry could not be here tonight, but as a man of prayer, I know he is sending his blessings, his love over this service tonight. And I am so thankful to God to be here with you this evening. So who's ready to receive some word of God tonight? Amen. All right. The message tonight is called Voice of Thunder. Voice of Thunder. The word of God says in Psalm 29.3, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. And you can only imagine you know, David looking out over the Mediterranean Sea and probably seeing this spectacular storm, this great thunderous cloud and it rumbling with power and correlating that to the power of our God, the might that he has over all of our problems, all over everything that may have come our way in our life. And he makes that connection. And I bet furthermore, he thinks about God made that thunder. God designed that storm. God made everything and he owns everything that he has made. He makes that thunderous sound. His voice thunders. The word of God says in the beginning, God, you know, was the word, the word was God. His word has power and it has the power to tear down the things that have come against you from the enemy. It has the power to build us up and to help us to be strong when there are things that are coming our way and they sound loud. Remember that voice of thunder that God has the power to eliminate anything that the devil has tried to do to cause harm into your lives. His voice thunders. When we go to Genesis 1, 1 through 3, the word of God says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and it was void. And darkness fell upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Can you imagine the sound of the power of the word of God saying, let there be, and boom, that light came to be the power that he has through the word to create. You know, his voice thunders in Job 37, five, the word of God says, God's voice thunders in marvelous ways. He does great things beyond our understanding. His voice thunders. In your life, perhaps you have seen God do spectacular, miraculous things that can't even be understood by the way of us humans. A lot of times we look at things in life from the perspective of a human being. But God does the impossible. He does things we can't explain. Sometimes he reveals it, but there are many things that we can't even explain what he does, but he has the power to do the impossible. That is why it is often so difficult for people to believe, even people that have seen him do miraculous things. Many months ago, I was at work I had a vendor, a third party come in to give a lesson. And this man looked very, very sick. And he just did not look good. And I said, you know, your life is more important. This work doesn't matter. You know, please, please go. And he's like, no, no, no I'm going to be okay. But I could tell he was really, really sick. And I didn't know what was wrong with him. And I, I had to walk away to get a few things. And then I felt the Holy Spirit telling me, you need to go pray for this man. You need, to, you need to pray for him. And I needed to go do something else. And by this time, a lot of people had showed up in a corporate office setting. Let's just say non-believers, a lot of the non-believers. And so I felt convicted by God again, you need to pray for this man. Now, again, understand the settings. I'm in a corporate environment. There's business people. I'm not in church. And God's saying, you need to go pray for this man. And so... When I went out, God had also told somebody else, this lady, me and this lady went and we laid hands on him. I don't think he was even a believer. And the Holy Spirit just moved in a miraculous way. Now he had gout and I don't know if you're familiar with that, but his arm was completely swollen. He couldn't move his hands. He was in a lot of pain. And immediately, immediately with people all around us, this man, just looked at his hand in awe and his hand began to open and move. And it was an incredible thing that all these people saw, but some of them were like this. They, they were not fans of JC. But the point is 
God's voice is thunderous. God's voice impacts. God's voice, when we listen, has the power to do the impossible. There was no medication. There was no doctor. The doctor of doctors was on call and he came in and made it happen. He healed that man and he saw with miraculous eyes his own hand healed before him. Before him, that is the power that God has. His voice is thunderous. And all of us are an instrument of Christ that has that power through Christ to do great things in his name, to to speak life where it is dead, to show the unbelievers the power of Jesus Christ that he can do, he can do anything, he can do all things. As we go to the first point called silent, it makes me think of, of many people in the Bible that did miraculous things for God, God having conversations with him, but there were, there were periods of time that God was silent in them. There's, there's many times in Abraham's life, there was a, a span of 13 years, in fact, that he didn't hear from God. And God did a lot of amazing things in Abraham's life, but there were times that he did not hear from God. And in your walk in Christ, there's, there's many times you're walking through life and you're going through it and you're like, where is he? I'm going through it. I'm going through something hard. I'm going through something difficult. Where is he in my life? I've seen him do miracles before. I've seen him do it to other people. He's done great things in my life, but where is he now? And that silence, it can affect us at times. In our, in our flesh, in our human nature, we think, where is he? He's been able to do it before. Why? Why is he not here to do it again? If we go to Psalms 28, 1 through 2, we hear David saying, to you I will cry, O Lord, my rock. How many of you have God in your life as your rock? Amen. My rock, do not be silent to me, lest if you are silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry to you. When I lift up my hands towards you, your holy sanctuary, all of us in here, one time or another have probably lifted our hands up to the holy sanctuary and we're asking God, please, please don't be silent to me. And it's hard when we're going through difficult times, but it is something that is relatable that everybody one time in their life has faced that is a believer that is trying to seek out God, trying to have a relationship with him. And we're wondering, when is he coming to rescue me? When is he coming to help me? And it's a difficult path of the human condition of wondering in that silence, where is God in my life? But I could tell you this, church, a lot of times he may be asking, where are you? Where are you? Have you done what I've asked you to do? Have you done what I've called you to do? Have you become what I need you to be? What I need you to be. He never, ever called us just to sit. He has an expectation for each of us. When we accept Christ into our lives, it comes with things. It comes with things that he asks for us to do. And he wants us to be part of the kingdom builders. Voice of thunder. Be that voice of thunder. Let him use your life to build his kingdom. You know, this church, Pastor Terry has talked about heavy machinery coming in and drilling these beams deep down, like the foundation has a foundation and that's powerful, right? That holds this building up and God is our ultimate rock and foundation. And to think we see things with our eyes of this building being put together with bricks and stones, metal beams, but God's word builds things. God's word built the universe. God's word created you and I. God's word created every single element that we have. He did it with his word. The power of the thunderous voice of God built it. But there were many times when people have felt he's been silent in their life. There is, there's even a gap of 400 years from from Malachi to the time of Jesus that there there was silence. There wasn't any new prophets. There wasn't anything written. There was silence. But do you think God wasn't working? Do you think God wasn't there making things happen? God is always there. He is always there, even when we can't see him, even if we don't think that he's doing something. See, the problem is, as us humans, is again, we're looking at things from a human perspective. We're trying to think of how God, the creator of all things and designed us, 
how he should do things, how the timing should be. He doesn't even live inside of time. He's outside of time. God sees how things need to be and the purpose with each and every one of our lives and how we are all connected in life. And with God, everyone, everyone has felt this at times. But it's up to us to start listening, to thinking about what is he really saying to me? If we go to my second point, listening. So listening is paying attention to a message in order to hear it, understand it, and physically or verbally respond to it. How many of us in here have been like, they're not listening to me? With frustration. Probably felt that before, right? Listening. But God wants us to listen to him. So in Ephesians 6, 11, uh, I want you to, if you've got your Bible, I want you to get there, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read something here. I'm going to read a verse in a second here, but I think back to my life and I think back to the things that the ministries and things that God has called my wife and I to do. And for many years, we would go to a juvenile detention center for about a decade. And this is not an easy environment to walk into. You, you go up to this building and there's a heavy metal door that opens and then you go in and there's another heavy door that opens and it makes this very theatrical loud clank behind you and then another door opens and then you finally get to a desk and then you proceed down a hall where there is more prison doors that go into more prison doors. And one day uh, we went there and there were three, these, these guards, these guys are pretty big guys and three strong looking guys were at the door of one of the units. And they looked scared, and I've never seen them scared before. And I don't really remember exactly what they said, but they're like, there's, there's a guy in there that's like off. Like he seems, they use the word like possessed or something. Like they didn't know what they were dealing with. They were scared of this person. And I think about listening, right? Listening to God. What does he want me to do? What does he need me to be for this moment? And I go in there, and I go into this a large open area in this part of the detention center and there's this this young man maybe 17 years old and he he looks pretty scary he's got something else in there and it it, it wasn't normal let's just say that and as I go up to him all of a sudden if you're new to church or you you're not really familiar with this there are things that God talks about of demons and I could tell you firsthand they're real so I go up to this this young man, and, and as soon as I get near him, this demon starts talking to me and starts telling me that he was there the day that Jesus got crucified. He starts describing the area. He starts describing seeing Jesus on the cross. I mean, into, went into great detail. And I just shut his mouth and hit him with the word in the name of Jesus, you know, casting out, rebuking. And this young man went into like convulsions, like seizures. It was, a, it was not a normal day, let's just say, at the detention center. And he became free, <laughs> free of this, this, this evil spirit. And I, I think about that power that God has, that voice of thunder, that in the name of Jesus, the power that that word has. And many years later, going back to the detention center, I'm in a different part of the detention center and a different person. This demon says to me, I was there when... Jesus was crucified, starts describing the same exact things as the one from years before. And it was a real eye-opener in listening to God speaking into me to, to, to use my life in the moment, to cast out a demon. And I, I think about that there are truly principalities of evil. There are things in this world that we don't see on a normal basis unless you're in those dark places, unless you are actively working in ministry and letting God use your life. And in those moments, I thought, you know, I'm not one to smack talk, and I know it would have been the right thing to do to a demon, but, you know, the, the Bible talks about them trembling and running. Again, to where I thought about, you know, you know you're, a, you're a long way. You're a real long way from where Jesus was on that day, running, running in, in fear. But if we go to Ephesians 6, the word of God says, put on the full armor of God so that you, you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. It says you. So what is God telling us? What, what are we listening to? What is he saying? He's saying you need to put on the full armor of God, right? 
Every day we need to do that. Every day there are potential for things that come in our lives. We gotta suit up daily. We need to always be thinking of putting on and listening to God, putting on our armor and being ready wherever we may be for a spiritual battle because it is a cold world. It is a fallen world. There are things out there that are evil, but we as Christians are equipped. God has given us the instruments, the tools necessary, the knowledge, the wisdom to speak his word and to, in the name of Jesus to cast out all the things that are not of him, all the evil. If we go to James 2, 19, the word of God says, you believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Tremble. God did not give us a spirit of fear. There are times in our lives when we face things that are scary. They are difficult. And they may seem in our flesh impossible. And it's scary sometimes. But God did not give us a spirit of fear. You know, he took it upon himself to say that to you. I did not give you a spirit of fear. He wants us to not be afraid of the enemy. He wants us to not be afraid of the things that could be. He wants us to stand firm in his word and what he needs us to be. Because there are so many things that come against us, but he remains the same. There are so many things that try to break us down, but he builds and lifts us up. There are so many things that try to disprove God, but he is alive and he is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Did you know that the only reason that we even know God exists is because he revealed himself. He chose to show humankind, I am your God, Yahweh, I am. I am, and he says, you tell them that I am sent you, right? He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to him but through Christ. It is the only way. And if we go to Ephesians 6, 12, the struggle is real, right? It says, for our struggle is not against flesh. It shouldn't be. And blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So we have a world beyond us that we can't even see with our human eyes, but it's there. It's there. And we need to be ready every day. The biggest problem that happens to Christians is that saying of the, the frog that gets boiled in the pot, you know, if it was hot water, you jump out, but it happens gradually over time. Nobody in here is the exception. Nobody in here is the exception. We have to always stay vigilant and think about where our relationship stands in Christ because things will come to your life. And if you are not firm in Christ, if you are not working through the struggles, it is easy to get burned. It is easy to get knocked down. It is easy to fail. But Jesus shows us a way. He shows us a way that sets us free. He shows us a way to overcome impossible things. But it's up to us to take that step, that leap of faith. We may have been going to church for 20 years, but going isn't enough. It's our relationship with Christ. Are we growing spiritually? Are we actively engaged in prayer and fasting in our home life? Are we taking the steps to seek God out? Are we? Are we? It's a difficult thing that we live in a life because we live in a fallen world. And because of that, there is sin. But Jesus is the one that helps us to stay clean, to stay pure, to have a clean heart and mind, and to think about what is right and wrong because it's easy to be deceived by the things of this world. You know, there's a, a light, a blue light, if you will, and in, in damp, cold areas, mold can grow. And if you picture an area like that, but you picture that light shining, everything in that light would not be able to grow any of the mold but everything around it would continue. And that light needs to be God over our life and our relationship with him. Because the moment you start walking away from that, that light, 
you start exposing yourself to those things of the world, the things that can bring you down, the things that can cause you pain and harm. But Jesus, thank God for grace because he gives us chance. He gives us chances. And a lot of times, maybe you've been beat up in life from mistakes that you've made. I'll tell you what, I suggest you read the Bible because there's a lot of people in here that God used that made some pretty big mistakes. But God loves you that much and he's the perfect one that we need to focus on and keep our attention on because everything else outside of that doesn't really matter. He's the one that holds the keys to the kingdom. He's the one that we need to really care like what he thinks about us and not the people around us. He's the one that can help free us from any situation that may seem impossible. And it's difficult when you're going through. It's difficult when you can't see beyond the situation that's in front of you. But Jesus has a plan. He has a way for you in your life. We're going to go to the third point, hearing. So hearing is the process, function, or power of perceiving sound. So I could throw this microphone over there. You might hear, hear it, right? You, you could hear a car drive by and hear a sound of a car. If I hear the car, I'm like, that's a 1970 Charger, 383 big block, four wheel carburetor, 727 transmission. He's going 40 miles an hour, 3,000 RPM. And you got to think about that, like how God thinks beyond just a sound. Like a lot of times we're, we're crying out to God and you know, it, we may not be having a relationship with him, but all of a sudden something's going down and, and we need him. And so he may say, yeah, I hear you, but I, I'm not listening to you. But it goes both ways. We have to have that relationship with God. We want him to listen to us. We want him not only to hear us, we want him to listen to us. You know, if you think of Noah, um, God told Noah what to do and he listened. When God was like, I need you to make this 400 cubits wide, he wasn't like, is that Egyptian cubits or Hebrew cubits? Like, are you sure? Maybe it should be like 700 cubits. Like, he wasn't talking back to God. He was listening to God. He was listening to what he needed to do, specific instructions. He acted on what was being told to him. And so when we hear that process, that function, or perceiving a sound, we, we need to hear God. And so in Romans 10, 17, the word of God says, so faith, faith comes from hearing, it comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. Now, think about this. It, it says faith comes from hearing the good news, the good news of Christ. But we hear a lot of stuff in our life, don't we? We hear a lot of stuff that may not be good for us. And your ear is picking up something every day. What is it that you are allowing into your life? What is taking your joy? What is a hindrance in your life where, where God should be? Where God should be, where you should be listening and hearing and applying, acting with what God has asked of you. There are a lot of things God has asked of me that I didn't want to do. And my wife, if she came up here and, and she would tell you firsthand that every time I was hard-headed, every time I didn't listen, God sent something big to knock me down. Because it, it takes a lot. I mean, I'm not a big guy, but it takes a lot to take me down. And every time he put me back on course and every time being hard-headed, I learned a lesson and then I would forget. And then he had to remind me, don't do what I do. Be better than me from the past. Because I tell you what, these things, even though God forgives us, even though God helps us and, and we move on in life, there's still scars, there's still things in our life that we don't have to carry, that we don't have to deal with. Hear him, listen to him, and apply what he has said to you. One Sunday morning, many years ago, in my earlier days of church, I decided to go on a bike ride, not just a bike ride, a mountain bike ride, an extreme ride through the forest. And I was supposed to be at church. And as I was going, 
I was going at a very high rate of speed. I was, I was a pro racer, so don't think of a normal bicycle guy. Think of a very high rate of speed. Going through the, the, the wilderness, and it was like this invisible force, like I hit something, but there was nothing there. And it was, it was so hard for me to process because I've done, by 10 years now, I'd been racing and I've been through a lot and I knew like there's no reason why I should be crashing right now. And I launched like those clowns you see launch out of a cannon. They got shot in the air. I could not move my arms. They were like stuck to my sides. And I'm going like those guys launched out of a cannon and I'm going head first and there's rocks and there's tree roots and I'm going about 40 miles an hour. And I think about God. I think about this beautiful wife of mine who was not my wife yet, but I wanted her to be my wife. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, I'm not coming back from this. There's no way. Like, oh, I was supposed to have bought a helmet, but I had broken it from another crash. And she said the day before, hey, shouldn't you go get a new helmet? And I'm like, no, I'll be fine. So I'm thinking about that too. It's slow motion, but going fast. And I hit face first, head first, with all my weight at that speed into rocks and roots. And I just hear a snap and a crack. And then I blacked out. I, didn't, I was gone. And I didn't have, I didn't tell anyone where I was going. I didn't have anyone with me. And I'm in the wilderness. And I, I finally come to, and I wake up. And I realize I'm alive, so that's a good start. And I remember seeing the light flickering through the treetops. And then I, I start thinking, my mind starts running, and I'm like, if there any snakes come out right now, like, I can't defend myself because I can't move. And so I had on a little backpack, and it had on, I had a nice little rectangle, old school cell phone in there. And I was like, if I could just get to my backpack, I could get to my phone, but I couldn't move. I couldn't move at all. And I realized, moving my eyes to my left, that my backpack wasn't even on me anymore. It was to the left. Um, and more time went by, more time went by. Then I started thinking about that guy that cut off his arm that was stuck in the middle of nowhere. And so my mind's really running and I'm like, should have gone to church. Should have gone to church, God. I should have gone to church. I hear you. I'm going to preach your word. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do, but I can't move. And so I look again to my left and I see, I can finally move a little bit of my neck and I see the phone is actually smushed into the ground. It's like he's really playing with me now. Like, okay, try to reach for that phone, you can't move. And then I started to look a little bit to the right and then I saw that my bone was sticking out. And then I realized I'm not, not getting up from this one like I used to, like I usually do. I was seriously hurt and I realized how bad it was and over, I don't know how much more time it took, I don't know how long I was unconscious, but I was finally able to get to the phone and I called her and I was like, hey, babe. I don't think I said babe, but I was like, hey. And then she could tell you this. I was like, hey, I, I got in a serious accident. I'm paraphrasing, I probably said something like that. And she's like, she thought I was joking because I was so calm, she says. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm really hurt and I'm in the wilderness. I'm near a tree. <laughs> I didn't know how to tell her how to even get to me. And I realized, like, no one's going to be able to find me back here. And so uh, the grace of God gave me some strength, and I was able to kind of roll over. And I saw the bike. It was, it was really far away. And again, I'm like, there is nothing there. Like, there is nothing that could have possibly launched me or that I hit. There was nothing there. The bike wasn't even broken. There was nothing there. It was in perfect condition. And so I'm like crawling all broken. And I thought about those old Western movies when like the cowboy was shot and he throws himself over the horse. So I threw myself over the bike and I'm like trying to get my way out and I'm going. And God, God literally used her and led her. And somehow she pulled up like right where I was coming out of the wilderness. I don't even know street signs. She knows in bad directions. She found me. She saved me. She rescued me. And when I got to the hospital, they thought it was really funny, the nurses, because my shirt said I do all my own stunts. So God was like, we're really, really going to teach you a lesson to straighten up. Do what I called you to be. Listen, hear me, 
apply, act out what I'm asking you to do and be. All of you in here have been called to do something. All of you in here have a calling. You have a purpose. And you are meant to do great things in Jesus' name. You are kingdom builders. And all of us are those little blocks. And when we come together, we got church. We unite. We do things for the Lord. We worship. We reach out. We make a difference because of Jesus, of who he is in our lives. Many people don't know who God is still. You and I are that billboard. You and I are that difference maker. You and I are the ones that show the unbelievers to heal the sick. You and I are the ones that show love to people, that show hate back to us. You and I are the ones that give a good testimony and a representation of who Christ is in our lives. Now that's not easy. That's not easy when you're not serving the Lord because when we're not walking with him, we're walking away from him and we're walking away from him. When someone's really rude to us, it's really hard to show them the love of Christ, isn't it? The old, old way comes out very easily. But God is good and he's good all the time. And tonight when you leave here, I want you to meditate on those words. I want you to think about that voice of thunder that he has that raises up, rises up out of you in your heart and shows the difference and the power that God has, that he moves mountains with faith the size of a mustard seed, that he can do the impossible. But you and I have to take action. We got to hear, listen, and act. As we, as we wrap up tonight, I'm going to go to Hebrews 4, 6 through 7. Again, that is, if you got a Bible, Hebrews 4, 6 through 7. The Word of God says, Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in, because of their disobedience. How many obedient people I got in here tonight? Five amen. Six, seven. Okay, come on. We read it again then. Because of their disobedience, God again set a certain day, calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David. As in the passage already quoted today, if you, what? Hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts. Today is that day. The voice of thunder. The God that raises the sick from the dead. The God that does the impossible. The God that just helps an abuser become someone that is kind. The God that takes hate and anger out of someone's heart and shows them love. The God that changes a horrible husband and makes him a good husband. The God that helps raise the impossible and cast out the impossible. But God does that through Jesus Christ because his name is the one that has power. Let that voice of thunder speak into every part of your life. Don't compartmentalize parts of your life. Let God come into everything. And if he tells you something is not good, don't try to argue with him. Listen to what he has to say. Listen to what he's asking you and let him use your life in a mighty way. Don't be like me. Don't be left in the wilderness wondering how you're going to crawl out. Don't be hard headed. Let God use your life in an incredible way because you have the power through Christ to make those differences. It is the power of Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask that you please stand to your feet. If there is anyone that would like to come to this altar tonight, please feel free with the freedom through Christ to come forward and lay your burdens to God. If there's a part of your life that you haven't let God speak into, let him speak into it tonight. Let that voice of thunder rumble and help you to overcome those difficult things. Let that voice of thunder help you against those that may come against you when you feel helpless. Let that voice of thunder work in your life to 
do incredible, great things that he's called you to be, he's called you to be, but you've been too scared to take that leap of faith. Let tonight, let today, today be that day, the day that that difference is made through Jesus Christ. Don't let tonight pass. If there's something that's tugging at your heart, I prayed, I prayed for every one of you that I didn't even know was coming tonight. I prayed that God would bring who needed to be here tonight, that he has something for you. Do not leave tonight without letting him work in your heart and in your life. Let him be that voice of thunder in your life because he has power that is unmatched power that gives you joy, power that gives you peace, power that casts out demons, power that saves your relationships, power that gives you that anointing over your body to help you feel right with him, to live right and do right in Jesus' name. tonight.